running along the river is a vast, blossoming garden. Coconut palms can be found here, and also grapefruit, mangoes, and papaya. But bananas are the most abundant. One's attention is drawn by the fact that not all the banana plantations belong to the Somalis. Vast fruit-growing areas belong to foreign firms, such as the Italian Romana. Some businesses and banks in the cities also belong to foreigners. Evidently, these are the remnants of recent colonial rule, which lasted so long in Somalia. In the 17th century, Portugal was the first European country that forced its way into the Somalia Peninsula and remained. former Sultan's Palace, which has been turned into a museum. The Arabs brought the Muslim religion to Somalia. In the 19th century, Somalia was conquered again and divided among the British, French, and Italians. Some immediately resorted to force. Others, like the Italians, for instance, made friendly calls on their ships and later unceremoniously entrenched themselves on foreign land. The British, 
set up fortifications in order to control the great sea gateway from Europe to Asia. It was built with typical British thoroughness, strong enough to stand for many centuries. But the colonizers' plans were upset by time, and the fortress is now a museum. Not long ago, people who ruled this foreign land lived in these cottages. The real owners of the land, the Somalis, lived like this. Although the colonizers built strong, barred buildings for the most troublesome representatives of the native population, the Somalis never surrendered to the conquerors. This is a portrait of Mohammed ben Abdullah, who lives in the people's memory. In 1899, he started an insurrection against the colonizers. The struggle lasted 20 years. Mullah Mohammed set up the first centralized Somali government in Tale. The National Liberation Movement was suppressed only in 1920 when Winston Churchill was Minister of Defense. The British paid dearly for this victory. Many of the British found their graves in Somalia, but they couldn't break the people's spirit. Soviet cameramen made use of these shots in order to show the historical background when the new African nation, the Republic of Somalia, declared its independence. The struggle for freedom, which had continued another 40 years, finally ended in victory. festive ceremony, the country's assembly ratified the democratic basis of the country and elected Adnan Abdullah Osman as president. This was the beginning of the country's new history. 
In taking up responsibility for their faith, the Somalis went to work. There was a great deal to be done. From the foreign rulers, the Republic inherited a vast territory, untouched by modern progress, without roads, waterways, and industry. In fact, an almost primitive land. Even in these settled areas, villages are far and few between. They are small agricultural communities. In one of them, our cameraman became acquainted with the village elder, Ibrahim Bashao. The villagers have small plots of land which they till with the most simple implements. The land is arid with only occasional rainfall. As a result, the harvest is inadequate and undependable. family is large, there are sons and grandchildren, and it's impossible to provide for all. This is Rukia, the elder son's wife. This is Fatima, the other daughter-in-law. Both sons left the village to earn a living. The Republic needs people. It would seem that time in these villages has come to a standstill. 